And so I've done, uh, you know, when I first started at JPL, I did communication satellites, and I went to Earth, uh, remote sensing, uh, building radars to measure winds over ocean. From there, I went to astrophysics. I could hardly spell astrophysics. And, uh, you know, and from there, I went to Mars exploration. Not all of that to you guys says, well, these are related fields. But in terms of science and technology, they're remarkably different, right? But what made me happy is that I didn't rest. I would get bored. You couldn't stay in a job for 30 years and do the same thing. You know, you would find cello kebabish hoshmaster, okay? So you could eat it, you know, on a Monday or a Tuesday or what? You can eat it for a week. You can't eat it for 30 years, right? I have fun at what I do. But, you know, so I keep changing. And uh, the, so the other thing that I wanted to leave with you is this constant yearning for knowledge and, uh, you know, and, and learning. You need to have a lot of intellectual curiosity. Now, I'm always very careful when I say that people don't think that I'm saying I'm an intellectual. That's not the point. It's the second word that I'm emphasizing. It's curious, you know, constantly wanting to learn. And for an organization like JPL, that actually comes in handy because if you want to go into the management, you know, they keep promoting people who knows more of the business, right? So if you happen to know the earth science and the planetary science and the communications and astrophysics and you have done tour of duties, much like uh, Parisa was saying that, you know, she just didn't jump from intern to be a vice president, right? So I keep changing and, you know, that helped me, uh, you know, uh, to uh, do what I do right now at JPL, which is the associate director. Now I want to get to my third and my last one, right? So people ask me sometimes, you know, I do a fair bit of interviews and they ask me, what do you think is your greatest achievement? And, you know, if I reflect, it has nothing to do with my career, right? A number of us are blessed uh, to be in a position to uh, sponsor some uh, young boys and girls in Iran uh, who have perfect grade point average, 20, for, you know, for those who are not used to the Iranian uh, system, it's like 4.0. But they cannot go to school because their parents cannot afford to send them to school. So by just a small amount of money that I would have spent on trivial things here. So what you do, you, you, you make sure that the, the student uh, stays in school. And uh, you know, through that, uh, instead of possibly having to sweep the sidewalks, he turns to be a medical doctor, right? And so that's not where the payoff ends because now he is in a different socioeconomic level and his kids have access to things that otherwise it would not have. And then their kids. And so all of a sudden you have impacted the life of so many people. Now don't get me wrong, I love to land on Mars and I like to go for other Earths, but there is nothing, nothing that really compares to that. That's the ultimate. And so the last piece is, these are individuals. I want to also tell you, talk to you about community. I'm not proud of it, but up until recently, I've not been active in Iranian American community. Uh, and uh, so about a year and a half ago, a friend of mine from New York calls me and says, uh, you know, they're putting a nonprofit organization together. And I said, well, good for you. And you know, and so what do you guys do? And he said, um, you know, what we intend to do is to change the image of the Iranian American community, you know, to celebrate the success of the individuals and have us define ourselves. Don't let the press define us. So my immediate reaction was, I don't have an image problem. Okay, but see, it's not about me. Okay, it is, not, not everything has to be about you, right? Uh, I, I said, you know, through this organization, we want to do networking, you know, to make sure that the, uh, the young Iranian Americans have access to some influential people to open certain doors for us, okay? So that if something happens, the, the community can mobilize quickly. 
And again, you know, I was thinking, you know, I'm late in my career. I, you know, I have all the networks that I need. Okay, but again, it's not about me. It's about the young people, right? So ultimately, I think the things that you do that's not about you as a person, if you get later in life, you'll find out that this is you know, the, the things that you cherish the most. So in closing, I leave you with three thoughts. You know, these are the things that have made me happy. Okay, find the thing that you love. Okay, then it's not a job, you will enjoy it. Don't stop learning. What you have, you, what UCLA, USC, and other universities give you, if you look at the house of knowledge that you will have in the future, this is just a foundation. The house is yet to be built. Okay, you will build that during the rest of your career. And it's just up to you. You can either stop and be satisfied with a one-bedroom apartment, or you can build a 16-room mansion. Keep learning. And finally, the last one is, uh, you know, don't be self-focused. Think about it. Thank you very much.